I believe it's a type of charcoal, but yeah, there's like okay. a spectrum. Yes, okay. So this is between cooking charcoal and activated carbon, and you've got biochar. All right. There, there are crossovers at both ends, but some of the charcoal made in these machines, including this one, has been in the activated range. Mm -hmm. um, species will affect it a bit with uh, volatility, how much energy is in certain species. Obviously, eucalypt is known to be really potent. Yeah. It's got fuel in it, um, whereas grass will be much less energy abundant. Yeah, if it's hot enough, you'll get into the activated carbon um, and equally with this, you can adjust the temperature. So if you want to make cooking charcoal, you can turn it down, turn it off early, stop it at 350, 400 degrees and you'll be able to have a longer lasting charcoal in the fire. Okay. Not that I aim for that, but... No. I, well, because then you burn off the Yeah, carbon then you, you haven't really gained... Yeah. Okay. There's no real net gain. It's neutral, but it's not net gain. Yeah. Whereas this is a gain if you put it in the ground or in the cement or in the bitumen. There's a lot being done in that, which I, I have no problem with. Yes, cement has a high carbon footprint, so let's try to reduce that. Um, use less of the nasties. This is a nice inert filler. Mm. Um, bitumen instead of our roads. Costing a million dollars a kilometre, it might cost $990,000 a kilometre. <laughs> you know, so it, it's just a nice little filler that doesn't hurt and it brings down the carbon footprint of the product in the end. So, yeah, I, I like to see it growing food personally, but that's yeah. a bit old fashioned. Yeah. Tell me about yourself. What was your childhood like and did you ever connect to nature? So you're asking me about my childhood and my affinity to nature? Yeah. Yes. Um, like a lot of kids, I like to spend a lot of time outdoors. I was always fascinated by the little things, the little bugs, the beauty in a, a leaf or a shell. Um, and, yeah, I just always wanted to look after the environment. Um, and I didn't like seeing it being exploited in yeah. a bad way. Because I want my children to share the same things that I've grown up with. I want them to see the great bit of relief. I want there to be ice on the poles for their grandchildren. And it's got a lot of these things that, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, time seems to be slipping away. I think they got to just over zero degrees on the pole in the last month. Yeah. I noticed you joined the biotech industry several years ago. What were you doing prior to being a Okay, so yeah, my previous life, I was a diesel fitter by trade, so it's just essentially a mechanic on big heavy machinery. So consequently, I've spent my life, I started in mining, from military, high speed commercial process. Um, worked in a few industries, but that always ends up going back to mining and the bees of bitter. Um, and it was, it was the skills that I had in bees of bitter made me confident to work with the steel, to work with machinery. I know my way around steel and nuts and bolts, so I knew that I had that as a skill set that I could work with. Um, from a scientific background, uh, it was hands-on background, and I knew that to make charcoal, there was going to be some steel work required, and so I wasn't intimidated by that. I um, worked around a lot of big hot steel things in my history, so it, it seemed to work well for me from that background to being able to make I've made million dollar mining equipment mm -hmm. for various companies, um, but this was a way to do something with my skills 
for the betterment of the environment as opposed to its you know, detriment. Yeah, absolutely. What was the catalyst that inspired you to get into biochar and its production? Yeah, so really it was for me flying to a mine and seeing the big holes. This is open cut coal mining I'm referring to. But just to see the scarring on what I knew was good farmland, uh, I disagreed with that philosophically. So rather than being frustrated, I think I took it upon myself to come up with a solution and I hope to make at least something better mm. to leave a positive legacy to say that it leaves a Yeah. So what have you been your enablers, inspirations or barriers during this journey of being on? Yeah, okay. That's a great question. Um, philosophical barriers, I guess. Um, people saying it's not up to you to come up with the solutions. I've had that from good friends. Uh, it's not your problem to solve. Why are you wasting your time? You can't fix the problem on your own. The business model selling the plans, it's a way now for me to, as one person, I can reach more people. So there's lots of one persons out there and more people who use these machines, the more carbon gets thrown down. So we're better off as a community working together to solve this. And what do those people say now, your friends say now, at this point? <laughs> really, I mean, they've certainly stopped <laughs> saying that it never worked. Now we're, people are I'm happy to hear that it's worked out well. It's not necessarily about my business, but for me, I feel good that it's more charcoal is being produced and put in the ground, more foods being produced, particularly in the developing nations that we direct to me. Um, there's a group in Africa who are talking about how much it's own. Um, uh, it's given its part Tuesday at the moment. Hello to everyone in Africa, Give and Spark Tuesday. So the initiative that we're doing today is there are 100 kids planting 100 trees in a number of schools around in Africa. Uh, and so they're all planting trees, bit of biochar and tree. So it's teaching the kids that the actions today can improve tomorrow as well. And it's going down the garden. Encouraging youth to be active and together, if they all do something, another hundred kids in another school, there's going to be a way that helps to bring down the problem. Yeah. As we speak, they wanted me to be online with them. I said, so I'm doing something else. Well, hello. Hello. <laughs> Spray it on plants. Yeah, so about 200 to 1. Um, that's, oh, wow. that's straight as it comes out of the machine, the wood vinegar. But um, 200 to 1 is the general rule for m many applications. Can go down to about 500 to 1. Yeah. Just simple odor control and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I've used it neat at home to get rid of uh, herbaceous weeds. Good. And it makes glyphosate look like a toy. Oh, yeah. really? 24 hours, it'll have the plant dead in the ground. Wow. If you use it straight. So you don't it's want very to sort of acidic. Drop it over the... Yeah, it's very acidic. Oh. Poison is in the dosage. 
Yes. So a little bit of fluoride's okay for you, a little bit of paracetamol's okay for you, a little bit of alcohol's okay for you, but don't there's something in alcohol you will yeah. die. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that will kill the grass if you throw it onto it. Yeah. But if you spray it with a dilution of 200 to 1, the grass, you will see it get darker. It increases the photosynthesis, the ability to photosynthesize. Oh, wow. So the leaves get darker in plants that have been sprayed. So it's a foliar. You spray it on the leaves. Um, that way it keeps the bugs off the leaves. When it rains or gets irrigated, it washes further into the soil. Mm. It's a biostimulant. It increases the root growth. Mm. For the same sort of chemical triggers, the plant feels stressed due to, and we're familiar with Australian plants germinating after a fire. Yep. It's the chemistry in the smoke, which is that. Yeah. It's the, the chemistry of the smoke goes into the stomata of the leaves and a tree that's not affected. Yeah. And it'll germinate too, whether it's been in the fire or not, if it's just been in the smoke. Yeah. So that's, that's the that's a direct injection of that sort of chemical there's a whole suite of chemicals in it it's like a hundred chemicals in there wow. but uh, and that'll change depending on the feedstock bamboo wood vinegar will act a bit different to red gum yep. or grass um, but they all have similar properties okay. but it'll just fluctuate so although all the biochar is the same the vinegar is different based on what you put in there at times well even the biochar can change Depending on the feedstock. Um, as I say, with grassy things, you're not left with a lot of substance. No. Um, and it, it will tend to break down to dust very yeah. easily. Where there's a school of thought that suggests that the hardwood biochar, because of its structure and it's, it's going to be more long-lived, mm. which means the effect lasts longer than f fine papery stuff so if leaves and things like that are disintegrating faster or not lasting as long what happens to the carbon that was captured if it's you know the size of a grain of sand to maybe five mil or something it gives more population that safety mm. and and they can populate and leave and come back and that sort of thing from that mm. whereas if if it's just a fragment of a home Mm. nothing's going to move in no, so it's just okay. providing more homes in a, a chunk of biochar than if it's been ground to graphene it, the carbon is technically still there but it's not providing the home yeah. which is a big part of what biochar can do yeah microbes yep, yep. yeah okay perfect pyrolytex machine I can just show you what a yield looks like over my shoulder. Roughly like that, which is pretty good. It's good to see. Um, and there's also that a piece of toast oh. in the leaf. But you can see the, every vein in the leaf and just toast, an apple, the teacher. So it's just stuff that I've thrown in to this machine just to see what it'll do. And it'll do this... It just it, and it's cooks biochar everything. Now. And that's biochar. It's, it's the same biochar, as that. 100%. And the same with your genes could go in there. They're cotton. It was yeah. a living product. Yeah. Everything goes in there. Yeah. And it just... And it is the exact same thing. As that's, you can see. That's yeah, just, yeah. That's it's crazy. amazing, isn't it? So you so you, you're left to with it. what went in. It's just a carbon copy. There's nothing but carbon left it's pretty amazing and super fragile of course yes but um yeah that's, that's what it. we did okay. the kiln 10 percent mixed in with that same rubbish soil this one is the enriched or inoculated biochar all three all three mm -hmm. so 10 percent of that mixed through that same rubbish soil this is um this is something else um stockholm method it's like um a structural soil okay so it would um, be very beneficial in a streetscape for example yeah. where you've got limited you know soil and you've got lots of road and concrete paths and all that sort of thing um it's been eaten by possums oh <laughs> but they liked oh. it yeah 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 what a shame. 
so that one was doing quite well as well but out of the three main ones that you can you can see the definite standard uh, soil yes yeah, standard soil 10 percent raw biochar 10 percent enriched beautiful and how long have they been growing they've been going for about four or five months oh now. wow yeah so it's quite a difference yeah yeah, yeah, very cool. Are you proud of yourself? Um, I'm just doing what I can. I don't really aim for that. It's not about my pride. It's, I want my kids to be proud of me, I yeah. guess. And they're at an age now where they're seeing what I'm doing and why. They've always grown up with me doing it and they've helped me when they're little, helping me go and try <laughs> and learning about stuff. But it's only now that they're in their teens that they're really understanding the problems and understanding my motivation for doing what I do. Um, so, yeah, I hope I'll make them proud of this. And are they now uh, passionate about climate action? Yes. <laughs> they're both in their own fields, their own ways. They're still finding themselves. My son's just in grade 12. He's just on that path at the moment. But uh, certainly we are both been uh, helpful in my journey and coming along for the ride willingly. I've been hands dirty and biochar since they were little, <laughs> uh, which is great. And consequently, they also share the story with people when they're asked. And that all helps to educate people. It's really about educating people that there is another way, mm. that there are alternatives to the status quo. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, thank you, Robert, for that. That's incredible. Um, you are an inspiration to me, and um, I know you'll be humble about it, but, uh, you know, it, it goes to show that people who have been in the mines and things like that can think differently and take action. You know? um, and I think maybe even more so, like, you see all the damage i suppose and 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 you know and i think that that that's pretty big you mm. know <laughs> i hope yeah. 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 absolutely um, thanks yeah. for coming out thank you